<laughs> okay. Here we go. Anybody got any questions or anything about anything I've said or something they want to add to anything? Um, we're continuing with session four. <laughs> I mean, I remember to say this. All right. Um, the um, probably one of the most controversial books in the Bible, I guess, in the New Testament, is the book of Hebrews. And then, uh, but to me, Hebrews is a it, 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 it's all about Jesus. It is, and he, it comes alive in a way that because he looks at it from a Jewish standpoint rather than the Gentile standpoint, I guess. So we have a good, but but it, it, we talk about the pre-existence of Christ. And so Hebrews one, uh, verse two, is in your in your book. And so half of these last is spoken to us by His Son, whom He hath appointed heir of all things, by whom. Uh, also he made the world and thou lord in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thy hand and so hebrews is about 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 jesus about his priesthood and things like that but his creation included everything from the electrons to the to galaxies from the angels to adam he was controlling the creative universe uh, who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sin set down on the right hand of the majesty on high Hebrews 1, 1 3 and so uh, <clears throat> you see Jesus is the high priest and so uh, all the millions of, of animals they have been killed and offering up to in the Old Testament, and um, Jesus paid one sacrifice for the entire sin of all the world, past and future, and He sat down at the right hand of the Father. That to me is just just an awesome thing. It's a done deal. Um, the um, He was controlling our universe. And he's express image uh, of a person of God. Uh, he is uh, before all things. By Him all things consist. In Colossians one seventeen. Our Lord Jesus not only put all things together, but He continues to keep things together um, and keep them together so that they don't come apart. Just like, um, I, this is just one of those things that really, I'm kind of simple-minded and to think that we could point out in space a rocket and say five years from now, that rocket's gonna hit Mars. That, that thing's turning out there. We're turning around here. <laughs> I mean, but the universe has such timing that that they they shot the, the rocket off and it, it got to Mars. Like almost five years later, you're thinking, wow, that's that's kinda like saying the Fran. Fran always take this rifle and down across the, the river there, there's gonna come this this uh uh, bear come up there, walking on the side of the river. Now, and I want you to shoot the bear, but the bear's not coming for three years. But the gun's real slow, so you'll have to shoot it now, and the bear will come by three years later. You're thinking that's weird, isn't it? But that's exactly the way it is, you know. God know God, they know next year on this day what day the sun's going to come up. Isn't that something? I mean, it's just because God's timing is so perfect, and that, that's what. That's what blows my mind, I guess. And, uh, excuse me there. Anyway, uh, he was, during that time before Jesus came, number three, he was not only uh, controlling the universe, but he was communicating with the Father. It says in John 17, 23, I am them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast loved me. Father, he says in John 17, 24, he's praying, and he said, uh, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. John 17, 24. Boy, um, 
It is an awesome thing that, that Jesus would come to this earth to die for us. It takes us to part three, the Old Testament ministry of Jesus Christ. Now, you can read the Bible through, and you can, you can read a lot of uh, different commentaries and things, but I think Dr. Wilmington here has it condensed in such a way it's just, uh, it's just amazing. And if we, if we just follow along and to see what he said, he, uh, uh, now, I heard, I've heard the term of Christophanes, and I've heard the word Theophanes. So both these words, uh, we talk about God, the, uh, Theos is God, uh, and you're, you're thinking about uh, Christophan, that's Christ. So the basic boils down this, Christ in the Old Testament. I remember one time I was in Georgia, not in Georgia, but in Richmond, and, um, and uh, I had to spend some nights on the road and so I would go down to the People's Drug Store in Richmond, and uh, I had a rack of books. They're called Good Book, Good Book, book Reads. And it was a book called Christ in the Psalms by a guy named John Hunter. And it was about $2 and a half. I bought it. I'd go back to my hotel room, and, and I would read. And so I got really challenged and really excited about, the, about reading this book about Christ in the Psalms. And so, but there were times... In the Old Testament, Jesus showed up. It was Jesus that showed up in the Old Testament, just like He shows up here in the, in the world today, or, or the world back when when uh, uh, when uh, He was on the earth, when uh, or He would show up in people's lives. But most Bible theologians hold that the uh, reoccurring angel of the Lord episode in the Old Testament is really Jesus Christ Himself. So you, you can call it the angel of the Lord. It's really Jesus, and we'll look at that in a moment, but uh, it, 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 Genesis 48 16 is, uh, is the first one that he looks at, that the doctor woman looks at he says, where the dying patriarch Jacob is blessed his two grandchildren the uh, old founder of the Israel uh, praised, the angel who redeemed me from all evil, bless these lads, and so as he's, as he's praying for Jacob Joseph's son, that God would bless him before he dies. Um, he's uh, he's going back and looking at some things. I want to look at two verses real quick. Two passages. Both of these passages are found in in uh, in uh, Second Samuel uh, 31. And if you turn back there, Second Samuel 31. Um, Failed to write down Second Samuel. I hope that's it. I think it is. Sorry, right, it's 31. Well, it must not be. It's not 31. There must be First Samuel 31. Um, tell you about uh, what it is and oh, I'm, I'm sorry it's, it's, it must be Genesis about 39. Trust me it's in there. Genesis 31 11. Yeah that's just something. Alright in Genesis 31 11 I'll, uh, I'll, I'll set the scene for you. Uh, <coughs> This is Jacob, and uh, he's got himself in, in some, uh, some trouble. One of the things, he, he went down to, uh, he was running from Esau, and he goes down to, to his uncle Laban, and uh, Laban makes him work uh, for the girl he loves, fortune and here, Rachel. And uh, so God has blessed him while he's there, and uh, he has lots of cattle, He's a pretty wealthy guy, except Laban has a lot of boys, and they're not nice boys. And so he, he's got himself in trouble. 
he would like to leave and go back home to his family, but he knows Laban's not going to be. He talks to his two wives, Leah and, and Rachel, and so as he talks to them um, about maybe possibly about going home, because he knows he's got grand, he's got children, and, and Laban is not going to live, give up his granddaughters. You know that? So, so he's, he's kind of shook. I, I remember walking between a rock and a hard place. And so in verse 10 it says, It came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived, and I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were lean, uh, streaked and specked and, and uh, gazelle. And uh, the angel of God spoke to me in a dream. This is Jesus now that spoke to Jacob in the dream. You, it, like you got this up in the mess. What you going to do? And he said, lift up now your eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are are uh, big streaks, specked and gazelle. For I have seen all these uh, Laban doeth unto you. I am the God of Bethel, whom thou, uh, where thou anointest the, the pillow, and where you vowest to bow unto me. And arise and get thee out from the land and return unto your own king, kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered uh, Jacob, and he's like, What are you saying? And they said that Rachel and Leah said to him, Is there any portion of inheritance for us in the Father's house? Are we not counted of him as strangers? For as he has sold us, and have quite desired also our money. They said, they said, we're with you, okay? we're with you. And so he thought, man, God told me to go and, um, in a dream, and so I'm going. So he takes all, when, when all of them out hunting or something, he gets his whole family. I mean, it's a herd like you can't believe. And he starts that long trip back to Canaan. And as he starts back, keeps looking over the hill because he knows Laban's going to be coming. And boy, is he going to be mad. What's he going to do? He's, he might just kill him. Anyway, so but the angel, but Jesus in a dream had told him to go. Now, uh, if we go over to uh, 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 31-24, uh, we'll see uh, uh, hopefully. Uh, and God said to Laban, you know, I like this. See, uh, Jacob had a dream. Guess what? Laban had a dream. <laughs> it's Laban is dreaming. Do you think God can do anything He wants in a dream? You know. You know. Uh, I, I pray sometimes. You know, somebody that's really rebellious in God. I give him a dream. Let him. Let him dream when they're in hell for ten minutes. Boy, that'll do. That'll shake you up real quick. That'll get you serious about God, brother. I'm telling you, what, sorry. So anyway, look at look at verse. Uh, uh, 24 and, and God gave to Laban the, the Syrian in a dream by night and said to him take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad <clears throat> then Laban overtook Jacob uh, now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount and Laban with his brothers pitched in the mount of Gilead and, and Laban said to Jacob what hast thou done that thou hast stolen away unaware to me and carry away my daughters my grandbabies. See? He, he says, um, and, and as cat, like you, like you took them by a sword. Uh, wherefore dost thou flee uh, away secretly and steal away from me and did not tell me that I might have sent uh, thee away with mirth and with songs, with tabor and with, with heart, and hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters, and thou hast not done it. Thou hast done foolish and so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do her. God of your father. Don't you just love it? But the God of your father talk to me about that. <laughs> I think, Woo! And he, he, he knows better than to put his hand on, on, on Jacob. That's what Jacob is talking about. He says, you know, you know, all the time that, that things are going bad for me, God was watching over me. And God was taking care of me. And, and he's the one that I'm asking to bless these grandchildren. The second passage that he looked at not only in Genesis, but it's in Judges 13, when a barren couple had just uh, learned um, from an angel of the Lord that the future birth of Samson in gratitude, Manoah, the father, requested the name of the angel that he might call the babe after him. Uh, note the answer, however. And so if you look at Judges 13, 18, uh, <clears throat> Yeah. 
anyway, I thought, well, it's written right here. I don't guess we have to look at it. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why ask thou thus after my name? Because he asked him, he said, What is your name? And he said, It's a secret. And the word secret is from the same Hebrew root, root word found in Isaiah 9 6. And um, remember in Isaiah 9 6 is a verse we use a lot at Christmas time. His name should be called Wonderful mm -hmm. Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. Well, well, here, uh, this, his name is Secret. It really, when he said it, it's, it's a secret, it's really wonderful. He's saying, My name is Wonderful. And he says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. As much as we know the, know the wonderful in, the, uh, in this verse refers to Christ, it is highly probable that Judges 13 18 does so as well. <clears throat> so so uh, as we examine some of the Old Testament theophanies, theophanies the times when, when Jesus Christ would appear in the Old Testament, there are some great examples of that. Um, like uh, one of them is in Genesis uh, 16 7 through 14. Let's look at that real quick. Um, and this is uh, Genesis uh, 16. Um, <clears throat> problem, you know, sin comes into people's homes, and it doesn't matter, it may seem innocent, but what happened was Sarah was beginning to question God, and she was questioning God, that, like, you, you know, Abraham, it's been some 20 years now, and, and uh, like, and she said, well, I'm like 80 years old, almost past the time of childbirth. And, and maybe what God meant was, you should go into my handmaid, have a, have a child by, by her, and that would be a child. And so, so he, he, he follows what Sarah would say. He went into Hagar, and, and, and she got pregnant. And, uh, and, and, and he, was, uh, he was so excited, and, and he, he, was, he was so excited uh, about that, and uh, about to have a son. But after a while, because Hagar could have a son, and, and, and Sarah couldn't, and Hagar was a servant girl, uh, Sarah got real jealous of her. She got tired of Hagar looking at her like, like I can do things that you can't do. And, and whether she thought that or not, uh, whether Hagar thought that or not, finally, one day, uh, as, that afternoon, as Abraham come in, uh, she uh, she jumps on Abraham. She said, "That woman, Hagar. I'm telling you, she is she is she is mischievous. She's rebellious. I want her out of this house." And she's an Egyptian girl, and so it breaks Abraham's heart because the boy hasn't been born yet, and, and it breaks her heart. It breaks his heart, and so he he gives her a water jug and and some food, and and, and they wave goodbye to. Him. But you know, this is just for me that's, that's amazing. And right here is, is what we're, we're talking about, is this situation in, in 16, verse 7. She's, she's come over to a place and, and she realized that, that she don't have any hope. And so, so anyway, and so verse 7 starts out, she says, and the angel of the Lord, she, she's, she's crying, she's broken. And, uh, and the angel of the Lord said to her, by a fountain of water, in the wilderness by the fountain of the way to shore. And he says, uh, look to me, hey. All right, uh, and he says to Hagar, uh, Sarah's maid, whence camest thou? And where are you going? What are you doing out here? Like God said to her, look, the angel said, what are you doing out here? And um, and where are you going? And she said, I flee from the face of my, of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Return to thy mistress and submit yourself into her hands. Uh, hey, listen, get over your pride, go home, suck it up, and you do what, what Sarah tells you. And the angel of the Lord said to her, And I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. I'll bless you. You go back and I'll bless you. So Hagar goes back and, and he says, And I'll, I'll bless your seed that it shall 
not be numbered, and it shall not be numbered for the multitude. It'd be something you can't hardly count. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And, and, and one of the words that she said, the Lord who sees me, that was what she referred to the Lord as the one who sees me. And so she, she began to have a relationship to God. And uh, so it's, it's one of those things that happened. The Lord not only spoke to Abraham, not only spoke to Jacob, but he spoke to a servant girl who was hurting. God is a God of love and mercy. And he's, he's looking for people whose hearts are broken that will, that will turn to him. And so uh, he appeared to Abraham in, uh, in Genesis 18 and in 22, 11. These two uh, appearances are critical times in Abraham's life. Uh, uh, one, and let's go to Genesis 18, um, a couple of pages over, we we'll are right there anyway. Uh, in Genesis 18, um, I mean, you know, the best thing to do is read this chapter. Just, just take your take your Bible, let, let, open it, follow along. And just, hey, you're sitting in the, in the door of the tent. It's hot as it can be. And tired. You hadn't, had any, you hadn't seen another human being other than the people that worked with you and your wife for a while. And you look up and you see three people coming. And you thought, hey, visitors! Hey, visitors! They were excited. And the Lord appeared to him in the plains of Merriman. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day and lifted up his eyes. He looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door. He bowed be before them to the ground. And he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Uh, let me draw you some water. Let me tell you what he says. I pray you, let me, let me fetch and wash your feet and, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I'll fetch you a morsel of bread and, I, and, and comfort you. Yet your hearts, and, and after that you shall pass on. Yet therefore uh, are you come to your servants. And they said, Do as you have said. So he said, I'm going I'm to fix something to eat. And Abraham hastened to the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal needed, and, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran to the herd, fetched a, a tender calf of good, and, and he gave it to the young men. They hasted, they killed it, they dressed it. And he took the butter and the milk and the calf which he had dressed, and he set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they ate. Hey, what's the big deal about that? Because of who these three men are. And they said unto him, what, and one of the men said unto him, Where is thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, sir, thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard in the tent listening. She laughed. She lied. And, and, um, and, uh, <clears throat> and so in verse 11, uh, now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with, with Sarah after the manner of, women, manner of women. Therefore Sarah lied within herself, saying, After I wax old, shall I have the pleasure, um, my Lord, of, 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 um, shall I have that kind of pleasure, uh, like the pleasure of having a son, my Lord? Uh, me being old. And, and the Lord said unto Abraham, what, oh, who, who, said, who talked to Abraham? The Lord. And one of those three is the Lord. That's, one of them is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, uh, well, why does Sarah laugh? And uh, shall I was surely by her a child while I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At that time appointed, um, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then uh, Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, not. But she was afraid. And he said, looked at her and said, No, you did lie. <laughs> I love it. And the men rose up and, and, and fenced and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to meet them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing that I'm about to do? And of course, we're going to talk about destroying Sodom and Mark uh, because of all the wickedness there. But the point is, one of those is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, he is going to share with, with Abraham that he's going to send down judgment. And so that's the famous intercession prayer there where um, he begins to intercede. And Abraham asks, the Lord said, what about the 50 good people that are there, righteous people? 
And God says, okay, I'll tell you what, if there's 50 good people there, righteous people, I won't destroy the city. And he says, don't be angry at me, God, but what if there's only 40? He said, I won't destroy it for 40. He says, why? I've been pretty fortunate so far. I just, how, what if there's 30? 30 righteous people. And he said, I won't destroy the city for 30 righteous people. But, but Lord, it might be just 20. He said, I won't destroy it if there's 20 righteous people. And he said, please don't be angry, but how about, what if there's only 10 people? And God says, Lord said, I won't destroy it. But there's 10 righteous people. Well, he, he does the math. There's a lot, lots of life, his children. And, and certainly, he has shared about the faith with other people. Certainly, there's got to be 10 righteous people.